Every Thursday, or as we say in Hawaiian, po'aha, we have our Aloha Authentic segment where we visit various streets around our islands to capture the stories, the mo'olelo, and the meanings behind the street names. This week, we visit a very busy street here on Oahu, in the Ahu Pua'a of Makiki, and in the Moku of Kona that holds the name of a Hawaiian high chiefess. If you drive on Oahu, more than likely you drove on Kina'u Street. This is a very popular street because it is also a cutoff from the H1 freeway eastbound that leads you into Honolulu because of, uh, because of the popularity. A lot of the name, a lot of the times the name is mispronounced as Kinao or Kinao, but the appropriate pronunciation is Kinau. The importance of the correct pronunciation is especially important because the name belongs to a high chiefess who played an important role to the Kingdom of Hawaii during an evolving time in Hawaii's history. Elizabeth Kina'u was born to Father King Kamehameha the Great and Mother Kalakua Kahiehie Malie. Kina'u was known as the second Kuhina Nui, which played a role similar to a prime minister, and she worked alongside her brother, King Kamehameha III. Like her predecessor, Queen Kaahumanu, Kina'u converted to Protestant Christianity and enforced laws that were inspired by the missionaries. During her tenure, she persecuted a lot of Roman Catholic missionaries and even tried to expel French Jesuit priests from the islands of Hawaii. Did you know? Now you do. Wow, super neat. Well, thanks for sharing that information, Kamaka. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Uh, you mentioned the Kuhina Nui position. Yes. Can you explain exactly what that was, what her roles were? Yeah, so we'll talk in depth more about it in a future video, but Kuhina Nui was created by Queen Kaahumanu, who was the favorite wife to King Kamehameha the Great, and she created it to serve and, and share power alongside the king, at that time King Kamehameha II, and she created this position because King Kamehameha II was so young, and he didn't really have as much experience as she did. So mm -hmm. in that sense, it was, um, she really was that political symbol. So that position Kuhina Nui kind of just continued for a few more decades into the future. Okay, interesting. Oh, uh, and then what was the relationship between um, Kina'u and Kamehameha III, their working relationship? Yeah, so uh, King Kamehameha III was kind of, he was kind of hoo-hoo, he was kind of mad that he had to share his power, he didn't have sole power mm -hmm. over his land because it was, he was more experienced, you know, be, other than his brother, the, uh, King Kamehameha II. So he kind of was, them two kind of butted heads at times, um, plus two, Kina'u was much more in depth with the missionary and, and that Western belief. Well, he wasn't so much, but they did work out the differences and they did create a new form of government which included the king, the Kuhina Nua, and created a council of chiefs. Okay, interesting. Um, and then just more background on Elizabeth Kina'u. Did yeah. she ever marry? Did she ever have kids? Yeah, she did marry. She actually, uh, you know, at that time, you could marry family members. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a popular thing. So she did marry uh, Queen, uh, King Kamehameha II. You know, and when it comes to kids, he, she did have kids. And I just want to point this out before our time is up, that last week I was called out. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to be corrected when I'm mistaken because this is a lot of work to find all this. Um, but I did mention that King Kamehameha the fourth, Alexander Liholiho, who's one of the children to Kina'u, was um, adopted to King Kamehameha the Great, and they didn't really have a close relationship. However, Kina'u is the direct connection between King Kamehameha the Great and Alexander Liholiho, King Kamehameha the fourth. She's yeah. the daughter of him, so in that sense, there were. Um, King Kamehameha the Great was the grandfather to the fourth, where last week we mentioned they weren't a direct connection, but I was corrected, and I'm more than happy to be corrected because it is a lot of work, and if anybody has any mana'o to share, please feel free to email yeah, me. Yeah, and, and it's so much that you do. I mean, <laughs> I just couldn't even keep up with you just saying that right now. I try okay, to talk this, really this, slow this. and clear and, and no, so enunciated. But definitely super interesting. Yes. Um, okay, so... We, of course, talk so much in the Aloha Authentic segment. We learned so many great things from you. What are we talking about next week? Next week, so we're going to we're gonna continue to talk about some ali'i for the rest of the month. And then the following month, we'll start to get into some la'au or to some plants and mm. to be a little bit more recognizable to what plants may be growing around us. Okay, very cool. And I love in your weather forecast when you do the moon phases yeah. and you tell me to plant my, <laughs> my kalo. I'm like, okay. Everybody has questions. Like, hey, this no, that's so good. I have some so, awesome uh, knowledge. Yeah, but I'm glad we're diving more further into it. Very yes. cool. All right, and thanks for teaching us more about Kina'u. Mahalo. All right.